Here we are, after a pretty long wait, we're finally at the Sega era of our series. Sorry, we meant... SEGA! What better place to start than with the Master System, the first console released in the West. You can learn a lot about the early days of the war between Sega and Nintendo by looking through the best Sega Master System games. Also known as the Sega Mark III in Japan, the Sega Master System was the company's third variation of the SG-1000 system. It was released in Japan in October of 1985, but what makes the Master System a little more interesting than anything Sega had done with home consoles up to that point was that the Mark III was going to get a North American release as well. By the end of 1985, it seemed as though the home video game market was recovering, albeit slowly, from the infamous crash of 1983. Sega would try to get their foot in the door through a partnership with toy manufacturer Tonka, but this proved to be pointless. By the end of the 80s, the Sega Master System had done underwhelming business, but was not a complete failure either. Enough was accomplished to compel Sega to stick around and try again with the Genesis. Unless you live in Brazil, where the Master System sold some 8 million units and continues to receive new games to this day, we're celebrating a bit of an ambitious underseller. The Sega Master System may not have outperformed the NES, but we'll see from this look at the best games for the console that it had, and still has, plenty of fun to offer. But what's your favourite Master System game? Be sure to let us know down below. Number 20, The Lucky Dime Caper, starring Donald Duck. Released well after Sega and much of the world had moved on from the Master System in 1991, The Lucky Dime Caper is quite frankly still a fantastic 8-bit platformer. Visually pleasing and extremely playable, the game lets players control Donald Duck in his pursuit of Uncle Scrooge's Lucky Dime. Obviously not a complicated story, even if the existence of Donald Duck does make us question what it means to be human, the Lucky Dime Caper, which is spiritually similar to the Mickey Mouse platformer series being released around the same time, is nevertheless fun to keep playing. It's a charming adventure in every sense of the word. With solid controls, evocative graphics and some surprisingly lovely animations, the Lucky Dime Caper is a good example of what the Master System often did best, and best of all, it doesn't cost many dimes to buy today. Number 19, Ghouls and Ghosts. Ghouls and Ghosts for the Sega Master System looks pretty dang gorgeous in all its monsters and gothic horror splendor, tasking players with taking up the role of the heroic Arthur and keeping their blood pressure below 140 once more. It's time to slay demons and save Princess Prin, and <laughs> just the best of luck with that guys, best of luck. Ghouls and Ghosts then and now remains one of the most brutally difficult games ever made. It's a vicious sequel to a vicious game that can drive you to madness if you aren't exceptionally skilled at surviving its countless relentless threats. The Master System version actually included a brand new way to enter secret shops to unlock new upgrades, but it didn't stop it from being arse-breakingly hard. There are few platformers like Ghouls and Ghosts, a game that is simultaneously a lot of fun to play, and also one of the most infuriating experiences you are ever likely to have playing a video game. Seriously, good luck with this one. If you don't have at least one angry crime while playing it, you are bigger chads than us. Number 18, Psycho Fox. Besides just being a great straightforward title for a video game, he's a fox and he's mental. He might eat his own feet. Psycho Fox is among the many hidden gems on the Master System. What makes this platformer so fascinating is that it's more evocative of a Mario game than almost anything else Sega was releasing at the time. This applies to the visuals and mechanics, with Psycho Fox offering an experience that's incrementally challenging, with good graphics and sound to make the whole experience a nice dose of retro fun. Psycho Fox is fun to play, and you're also going to appreciate how often the game finds ways to be visually colourful within the limitations of the Master System. There's nothing groundbreaking here, apart from maybe being able to place bets on the routes you take. Psycho Fox is just really winning, but remember, gambling is for losers. Unless you win, of course, in which case, keep gambling, it will be fine. You will never stop winning. Warning, Culture Vultures does not offer financial or legal advice, we are literally just birds. Number 17, a little bit of the bubbly, Bubble Bobble. Bubble Bobble is easily among the best Sega Master System games because of how well it translates to the home console. Promising an arcade perfect experience upon its release in 1988, the game got pretty darn close to delivering on that. It's not perfect by any means, and its arcade level aspirations hardly matter now, but the game remains a great port across the board. Bubble Bobble has been released for countless consoles and other devices, and this particular version of the platformer is among the best. More than 200 levels, lots of challenge, and the expected cast of iconic characters await you here. 
it probably won't surprise you to know that the two-player mode adds even more depth to this deceptively simple delight. If you've never tried a Bubble Bobble game before, you could do far worse than trying one of the most influential co-op franchises of all time. Challenge! Try and say Bubble Bobble five times fast. Bubble Bobble Bubble Bobble Bubble 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 Number 16, Master of Darkness. It's fair to look at Master of Darkness, also known as Vampire Master of Darkness, and call the game a Castlevania clone. Both games feature a protagonist going to war against Dracula and his assorted minions of varying darkness. Both games feature little flying monsters that will drive you nuts. Both games also feature rage-inducing stares. In truth, Master of Darkness is not a particularly original game in concept and in much of its execution, even if it is quite the looker for its time. Yet, on the Sega Master System, which doesn't have nearly the same amount of depth as the NES, Master of Darkness is a standout. And, quite frankly, if you don't care about the rip-off element of all this, you're left with a really entertaining and challenging game that does manage its own clever touches in several ways, such as the surprising inclusion of Jack the Ripper as a boss. Anyone else remember when Jack the Ripper was a villain in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure for about four minutes? God, I love that stupid, stupid show. Number 15, East The Vanished Omens. Still producing games to this day, the East series started strong from the beginning. A quick playthrough of the 1989 RPG classic East The Vanished Omens, also known as East One Ancient East Vanished, shows us just how good these games have always been. The SMS version may not be the best edition of The Vanished Omens, but it's a strong effort, especially considering the limitations of the time. As the heroic Adol slash Aaron, players can explore a relatively vast world of monsters, exotic locales, and an impressively wide array of characters and challenges. There's at least a few very, very good RPGs for the Master System. Even today, it's easy to appreciate East, The Vanished Omens, being one of the reasons why fans of the console weren't without some quality games, and why East has continued to thrive for what feels like another 50 games. What's your favourite East game? Let us know down below. Number 14, Fantasy Zone. An adorable shmup that answers the question of what it would feel like if a child's colouring book tried to murder you, Fantasy Zone was an 80s arcade hit for Sega. Because Sega are fans of making money, it just made sense to port the game over to the Master System. While the series would go on with a couple of excellent sequels, including Super Fantasy Zone for the Genesis and a direct Fantasy Zone sequel for the SMS itself, this first entry for many is still their favourite. And that is fair enough, as Fantasy Zone is a vibrant and decidedly challenging action shooter that never becomes unfair or close to impossible. The cheerful visuals of Fantasy Zone and its light sense of humour combine nicely with good gameplay to create something of a forgotten gem. We haven't seen anything at all from the series since about 2012. That's a shame. Number 13, Power Strike. Also known as Eleste in Japan, Power Strike is also seen by many as an underrated classic, but unfortunately one of the best Sega Master System games of all time is hardly remembered today because it was originally released as a mail order title. That's really too bad. When you think about it, limited run games is the closest we have to mail order games these days, except they probably didn't take a bloody year to arrive back in the day. With gorgeous visuals and soundscapes, as well as one of the stiffest shoot 'em up challenges you're ever going to find on the Master System, Power Strike is another game that proves the Master System had games that could theoretically compete with the NES. Power Strike also benefits from being developed by Compile, one of the best developers of this type of game of all time. There's also an awesome Europe exclusive sequel for the Master System if you're interested. You can even play that on the Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4 thanks to a port in 2020. Oh god, 2020. That year. It's all coming back! It's all coming back! I hate you! It's all coming back, you understand? I don't like it! I don't like to think about it! <laughs> Number 12, Road Rash. Also, what my fat little thighs got after 10 minutes of cycling as a fat little child. Originally a highly successful Genesis title, Road Rash was ported to the Game Gear and even the Master System. Unfortunately, it's the SMS version that players tend to forget ever even existed. And yeah, well, that's fair enough really, as the game came out well after most of the world had moved on from the Master System. But those interested in going through the very best of what the Master System library had to offer will be fascinated by how much this significantly stripped down version of Road Rash gets right. Being able to see other drivers in your rear view mirrors on an 8-bit title was a pretty big deal for the time. 
Obviously, the SMS Road Rash isn't going to compete with its bigger and badder counterpart, but ignoring the value of this game for that reason alone is pretty silly. Road Rash looks and plays quite well in the 8-bit arena, as the fun of vehicular violence and punching people in the face transfers nicely across all generations. Number 11, Operation Wolf. Ideally, you're going to want to play Operation Wolf with the Master System version of the light gun, known as the Light Phaser. However, even if you have to use the controller, which is naturally always going to be a little problematic with these sorts of games, the NES version has the same issue, you're still going to find yourself having a ton of fun with Operation Wolf. Recreating the arcade hit from Taito to a surprisingly effective degree, Operation Wolf looks and even generally plays as good as most of the console action games of a similar stripe that were coming out in this period. It's even still got that simple fun factor even today. I played at a convention not that long ago, it was great, I was bad, it was great though. Operation Wolf for the SMS is at least better than its superb NES counterpart and that's saying something. Make sure you bust out the light phaser the next time you're near a CRT. CRT stands for click, write and subscribe. Do it. Number 10, Prince of Persia. From a graphical standpoint, few Sega Master System games can touch Prince of Persia. The iconic series has been around for a long time indeed, and this 1989 release tells a narrative in which these games have almost always been good. The Master System version of Prince of Persia is another gem that's never really gotten its due. The graphics have punch, the animation is far more fluid than you might suspect, and the controls are for the most part satisfying, even if initially a little bit frustrating, due to just how weighty and responsive they were for the time. It's important to remember that Prince of Persia, which provides a deep, somewhat weirdly unsettling platformer challenge for those interested, along with plenty of other Master System games, didn't fail because they were bad. The Master System version of Prince of Persia is actually one of its best versions. Prince of Persia has been around in one way or another for the last few decades for good reason, and we're finally getting a new game that screams a solid 7 out of 10 at the very least. Number 9, Golden Axe Warrior. Looking and playing more like The Legend of Zelda than one of Sega's legendary Golden Axe brawlers, Golden Axe Warrior nevertheless still kicks an awful lot of arse, a lot of the time yours. Players assume the tasks of finding the Golden Axe and destroying the horrifying Death Adder once and for all. Much like Zelda, that means travelling a massive, often aesthetically engaging overworld with an absolute whipper of a soundtrack to battle enemies and gain strength. You're also going to be spending a whole lot of time traversing through some tough dungeons. No, Golden Axe Warrior isn't quite as good as The Legend of Zelda, while also having very little to do with the mainline Golden Axe series. The comparisons to its genre peers are impossible to ignore, but nothing changes the fact that this is a must-play for anyone who wants the strongest Master System contenders and one of the most underrated action-adventure games of all time. Number 8. Oh, it's our type our kid! By the end of the 1980s, you could barely move without bumping into a port of the arcade juggernaut R-Type. That's not a bad thing, as we're talking about one of the best 2D side-scrolling shooters in video game history. It just means that with so many R-Type ports around, some of them are bound to get lost in the shuffle. Going on this game's Wikipedia page and clicking Show Platforms is like opening The Lost Ark. The Sega Master System version of R-Type isn't particularly better than any other version of this legendary game. However, it's yet another arcade game done quite well despite the limitations of the Master System, with it showing just what 8-bit architecture can offer once you know it inside and out. R-Type looks great on Sega's first North American console. The brutal, addictive gameplay translated flawlessly to the Master System as well, and the series would continue for countless entries following its success. Number 7, Shinobi. Some stellar Shinobi games would eventually find their way to the Sega Genesis and beyond. However, the story of Sega's most famous ninja began first in arcades and then on the Master System in 1988. The fast and intense action gameplay of the original version was ported nicely to the Master System, although naturally you should manage your expectations with the phrase, Arcade Perfect. All joking aside, your ninja adventures as Joe Musashi make for a Master System experience that sets the stage nicely for superior sequels and spin-offs. Even if you don't care about any of that, play Shinobi and you're still left with a Sega Master System game that keeps up with the best of what its predecessor had to offer. Throwing stars at silly bastards like Early Time Crisis. The Shinobi IP may have seen countless sequels well into the 2010s, but few of them could match the early peaks on offer here. 
we haven't had a new Shinobi game in almost a decade, which is quite surprising considering how in demand Ninja and Samurai are in games these days. Shinobi and Football Manager when, Sega? When? Number 6. Outrun more than just providing aesthetic inspiration for synthwave fans for the rest of time, OutRun is still a blistering and beautiful Sega Master System racing game. One of the strongest examples of the graphics and sound the SMS was capable of, OutRun was an early port for the Master System. It's clear even today that no expense was spared in making the game look and play as close to its arcade racing parent as possible. Quite frankly, if we were to ever come up with the best arcade ports of the 8-bit era, Outrun would be a strong frontrunner for the top spot, even if it has some awkward similarities to Sega's own Hang On. While extremely simplistic by today's standards, Outrun still packs a punch and isn't likely to bore you. What worked then still works today, as there's just some simple magic in racing against the clock to catch a seemingly never-ending horizon. Sit back, put on your favourite Synthwave playlist, grow a mullet, and experience racing at its most pure. Number 5. Wonder Boy 3 – The Dragon's Trap A visual feast with some of the best platforming mechanics on the Master System, Wonder Boy 3 – The Dragon's Trap is a genuine masterpiece of the 8-bit era. One of the best reasons to own a Master System in 1989, at a point in which Sega was shifting things over to the Genesis, The Dragon's Trap gets everything right from start to finish. Bright, colourful graphics depict a huge interconnected world that you will have the opportunity to explore in rich detail. More than just looking nice, Wonder Boy 3 has singular charm and personality. The game's controls are some of the best to be found anywhere on the Master System as well. And that soundtrack, now talk about a bunch of bloody boppers. You owe it to yourself to at least check out The Dragon's Trap. And if you can't hack the lack of pixels, be sure to check out Lizard Cube's excellent recent remake. Number 4. Land of Illusion, starring Mickey Mouse Michael Mouse starred in some of the best platformers of the 80s and 90s thanks to companies like Capcom and Sega. Land of Illusion, which seemingly has starring Mickey Mouse in the title to placate his massive ego, deserves to be recognised among the best. A charming platforming game that never fails to look and feel like an adventure featuring Mickey Mouse, this isn't a game you're going to beat quickly or easily. It presents an engaging and well-built challenge as you have to think and move against enemies and the sorts of challenges you might be expecting for an 8-bit game of this era. The kind of challenge that Disney now has on its hands to make a good Star Wars movie. In other words, it's retro hard. Land of Illusion still has an art style that gives it the best kind of Sunday morning cartoon feel, while the game's mechanics and overall difficulty make it timeless fun. Wait. Land of Illusion is also the name of a Genesis song which is also the name of a Sega console. Phil Collins is Sonic confirmed? Number 3. Sonic the Hedgehog We've got our eye on you, Philip. Sonic the Hedgehog is obviously best known for providing the Genesis with the monster hit the system needed to start being taken seriously while also starting a video game dynasty. However, the game also got a port from developers ancient for both the Sega Master System and the Sega Game Gear. Either version is honestly quite good for what you're getting, which is about 2 inches of screen on the Game Gear, but the Master System version is considerably better overall than the more famous Game Gear version. The basic premise and endgame goal of Sonic the Hedgehog remains the same on any system. Unless you're playing any of those really weird ROM hacks, in which case, don't. However, for a variety of reasons, the Master System release of this game doesn't try to completely recreate its beefier younger sibling, though the basic premise remains the same. Go fast, and try not to have a panic attack in the water levels. Sonic the Hedgehog simply plays to the best of what the Master System was capable of, going relatively fast despite the constraints of the technology. Number 2. Fantasy Star Fantasy Star can be appreciated as more than just a monumentally impressive JRPG achievement for 1987. It also provides a clear impression of the ways in which Sega distinguished itself from rival Nintendo. The NES was home to medieval fantasies like Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest slash Warrior. Sega put their weight behind Fantasy Star, a science fiction JRPG that would see further blockbuster installments across several future Sega consoles. The run this series had on the Genesis is legendary stuff, but this remains a great place in which to begin your experience with this fantastic franchise. A little slow by modern standards, Fantasy Star is still a fascinating time capsule that also just happens to be one of the best Sega Master System games ever made. 
as well as probably the best looking 8-bit JRPG of all time. The level of depth and gameplay variety they managed to cram into this game is still quite staggering even today, and we think it's a pretty dang good game, but not quite as good as number 1, Alex Kidd in Miracle World. As it turns out, the game packed in with the Sega Master System is the best one of them all. Kind of like how Astro's Playroom is the best game on the PS5, and I won't take any questions, thank you. Alex Kidd in Miracle World was the console's best foot forward in the mid-1980s, offering a level of detail and gameplay variety rarely seen at the time. Although not going out of their way to copy Nintendo, Sega still understood that they too needed a popular mascot to push the system with a really good game. Before the Blue Boy came along, their answer was Alex Kidd in Miracle World, a vibrant and cartoonishly appealing platformer with a lot of character that could have done better if Sega had even been able to get their system to retailers. And also if children took performance enhancing drugs to actually complete the thing. Many who owned the Sega Master System when it came to Western Shores remember Alex Kidd in Miracle World fondly. It's not hard to understand why. Alex Kidd looks, sounds and feels timeless. Even in the face of a recent remake, that still beats my ass. It also features a minigame of rock, paper, scissors that is somehow more intense than most modern games could ever possibly hope to be. For this and so, so much more, we have to give the best Sega Master System game of all time to Alex Kidd in Miracle World. And there you have it, that was our list of the best Sega Master System games of all time. How much of your childhood have we just unlocked? We can't put it back in, sorry, you can't go home again. It's all out now. It's all, it's all out. What did we get right? What did we get wrong? What did we miss out on? Be sure to let us know down below in the comments down below. Join us next week for our video on the best Genesis games in which I betray my country for 20 minutes. You'll, you'll see why.